Have you ever startled yourself thinking about where your soul will spend eternity? For many, it's a question too heavy to consider, but ignoring this truth doesn't make it any less real. The risk of doing so is eternal. Hell isn't just an ancient idea or a distant metaphor. It's a sobering reality God warns us about. This message isn't meant to frighten, it's meant to awaken. The truth about punishment for eternity isn't just for obvious sinners, it's for you and me. How we live today has eternal consequences, and understanding the signs that you may be walking down the wrong path is critical for every believer. You might feel confident in your faith, but what if you're missing something vital? Jesus warned that not everyone who calls him Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 7, 13, 14 reminds us that the gate to life is narrow, while the road to destruction is wide, and many are on it. That warning should shake us, but it should also inspire us to reflect deeply and pursue God with all our hearts. Stay with me, because what you'll discover today could transform the way you see your spiritual walk and realign your heart toward eternity. These five signs aren't just warnings. They're opportunities to reflect, turn back to God, and embrace His grace while there's still time. If this resonates with you, if you believe understanding these warnings could save not only your soul, but others who need to hear this, leave a comment below with the phrase, I choose the narrow path to life. By doing so, you're not just engaging with this message, you're making a declaration of faith and commitment to God's truth. And before we dive in, I invite you to take a simple but powerful step. Subscribe to this channel and like this video. Why? Because each time you do, you help spread the life-saving message of the gospel to others. Together, we can ensure that more souls hear God's truth and find their way back to Him. Ready to uncover these life-changing warnings? Let's begin. Some believe that living a morally upright life is all that's needed to secure a place in heaven. They point to their good deeds, charity, or the fact that they've never committed any major wrongs. But the truth, as the Bible teaches, is that trusting in one's own righteousness is a dangerous path, one that can lead straight to eternal separation from God. Isaiah 64, 6 delivers a sobering message. All our righteous acts are like filthy rags. Even the best of human efforts fall far short of God's perfect standard. This isn't to diminish the value of good works, but to clarify their purpose. Acts of kindness and morality are important, but they cannot erase the stain of sin. Romans 3.23 reminds us, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every person is in need of a Savior, no matter how good they believe themselves to be. Jesus addressed this mindset directly in Luke 18, 9, 14, where he shared the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. The Pharisee boasted of his fasting, tithing, and religious observances, yet his pride blinded him to his need for God's mercy. In contrast, the tax collector simply prayed, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus declared that it was the humble, repentant man, not the self-righteous one who left justified before God. This parable underscores that no one can earn salvation. It's a gift that must be received through faith. Self-righteousness is often subtle. It can manifest in attitudes like comparing oneself to others or believing that certain religious rituals make one deserving of heaven. But Ephesians 2, 8 to 9 reminds us, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God not by works, so that no one can boast. Relying on personal effort shifts the focus away from Jesus, who is the only way to eternal life. When people place their trust in their own goodness, they are, in essence, saying that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was unnecessary. This is a serious misunderstanding of the gospel. The cross is the ultimate expression of God's love and the only remedy for sin. John 14, 6 affirms this clearly. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Without faith in Jesus and his atoning work, no amount of goodness can bridge the gap between humanity and a holy God. Have you ever paused to reflect on what you are trusting for your salvation? Are you resting on your own efforts? Or have you fully surrendered to Christ? 
This is not about condemnation. It's an invitation to reassess where your hope truly lies. The warning here is clear. Self-righteousness cannot save you. But what happens when someone refuses to believe in the existence of hell itself? When the consequences of rejecting God are dismissed, how does it shape one's life and choices? There are those who live their lives believing that hell is nothing more than a scare tactic, a concept crafted to control behavior, or an outdated relic of religious tradition. They reason, a loving God would never allow such a place to exist. Or they dismiss the idea altogether, focusing only on the goodness of life now. But this perspective, while comforting on the surface, is a dangerous lie that blinds people to the eternal consequences of sin. Jesus spoke more about hell than anyone else in Scripture, and his words were direct and unmistakable. In Matthew 25, 41, he describes the final judgment. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell is not an abstract idea or metaphor. It is a real place of eternal separation from God, created not for humanity, but for the devil and his followers. To dismiss its reality is to ignore the warnings of Jesus himself. Denying the existence of hell diminishes the seriousness of sin. If there is no ultimate consequence, sin becomes trivial and the call to repentance loses its urgency. Revelation 21.8 gives a sobering account. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. These words are not meant to scare, but to awaken us to the weight of eternity and the need for a savior. The enemy thrives on this deception. John 8.44 tells us that Satan is a liar and the father of lies. One of his greatest strategies is convincing people that hell doesn't exist, or if it does, it's not something they need to worry about. This false sense of security numbs hearts to the reality of judgment and the urgency of accepting God's grace. Hell's reality is not meant to overshadow God's love, but to highlight it. God, in his mercy, provided a way of escape through Jesus Christ. John 3.16 declares, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The fact that God went to such extraordinary lengths to save us underscores the gravity of what he saves us from. To dismiss the reality of hell is to ignore the incredible depth of God's love displayed on the cross. It minimizes the sacrifice of Jesus, who endured unimaginable suffering, so that no one would have to face eternal separation from him. Have you allowed yourself to question the reality of hell, or have you fallen into the trap of seeing it as irrelevant or exaggerated? Reflect on this, not to dwell on fear, but to realign your understanding with the truth of scripture. But what happens when someone not only dismisses hell, but also rejects the very cross that offers salvation. How does such a rejection affect the soul? Let's move forward to examine this together. For some, the message of the cross feels outdated, unnecessary, or even offensive. They may see it as an archaic symbol rather than the cornerstone of salvation. Others might think they can achieve their own form of reconciliation with God without the need for sacrifice. But rejecting the cross is not just a misunderstanding. It is a rejection of the only path to eternal life. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 1.18, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. To reject the cross is to reject the power of God to save, heal, and redeem. It is more than a symbol. It is the ultimate act of love where Jesus bore the weight of sin for humanity. Without the cross, there is no forgiveness no restoration, and no hope. People often reject the cross because they fail to see their own need for it. They might reason, I'm a good person, and I don't need someone to die for me. But this mindset ignores the reality of sin and its devastating consequences. Romans 6.23 makes it plain, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sin requires payment. And Jesus willingly paid that price on the cross 
so that we wouldn't have to face eternal separation from God. Rejecting the cross also reveals a deeper resistance to humility. Embracing the cross means admitting that we cannot save ourselves, that we are utterly dependent on God's grace. This was the struggle of many in Jesus' time, as it is today. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. His words leave no alternative. Salvation comes only through him. To turn away from the cross is to walk the path of destruction. Furthermore, rejecting the cross diminishes the immeasurable love of God. John 3.16 reminds us, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The cross is the ultimate expression of that love, a love so great that it carried the weight of the world's sin and offered freedom to all who believe. When people reject the cross, they are not just rejecting a concept, but the very heart of God's plan for salvation. What about you? Have you fully embraced the message of the cross, or have you minimized its significance in your life? To reject the cross is to reject the lifeline God has thrown to save you from eternal separation. But rejecting the cross often leads to something even more troubling, a life consumed by the here and now with no thought of eternity. They chase careers, relationships, and material success, believing that these are the things that bring fulfillment. While there is nothing inherently wrong with enjoying life's blessings, living without an eternal perspective is a dangerous sign. It's a mindset that prioritizes temporary gain over eternal rewards, often leading people down a path far from God. Colossians 3.2 gives us this instruction, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. This is not a call to abandon earthly responsibilities, but a reminder to keep eternity in view. When someone lives solely for the present, they risk becoming consumed by worldly desires. Their choices, values, and priorities shift away from God and toward fleeting pleasures, leaving little room for spiritual growth. Jesus spoke of this danger in Mark 8.36, asking, What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? It's a sobering reminder that worldly success and eternal salvation are not the same. A life without eternal perspective often leads to neglecting prayer, ignoring scripture, and undervaluing the importance of a relationship with God. It becomes all too easy to trade what is eternal for what is immediate. Living without eternal perspective doesn't just affect the individual. It has ripple effects on those around them. When someone prioritizes worldly gain, they often neglect their spiritual influence on family, friends, and community. James 4.14 reminds us, Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Time is fleeting, and living with eternity in mind ensures that we invest in what truly matters. Perhaps the most significant danger of this mindset is that it lulls people into spiritual complacency. When eternity feels distant, repentance and faith can seem less urgent. This false sense of security leads many to believe they can get serious about God later. But Proverbs 27.1 warns, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Failing to prioritize eternity leaves the soul unprepared for the moment it meets God. Ask yourself, are you living with eternity in mind, or are you consumed by the temporary? This is not about condemning worldly pursuits, but ensuring they don't replace the ultimate goal, walking in obedience to God and preparing for eternity with Him. When you shift your perspective, even the smallest choices take on eternal significance. If this resonates with you, I want to ask you to take a moment and reflect. Leave a comment below with the phrase, I am one with the Holy Spirit, as a declaration of your desire to live with eternity in mind. And if this message is stirring something in your heart, feel free to like this video as an act of faith, acknowledging the Holy Spirit's work in your life. But what happens when the ultimate source of love, God Himself, is rejected? What are the eternal consequences of turning away from His love? At the core of the Christian faith lies a truth so profound it shapes all of eternity. God is love. His love is not just a characteristic. It is His very essence. 
Rejecting God's love, therefore, is not just a passive decision. It is an active turning away from the one thing that can save a soul from eternal separation. This rejection is one of the clearest signs that hell may be waiting after death. The Bible tells us in 1 John 4, 8, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This verse isn't just about emotion or sentimentality. It is about relationship. To know God is to experience his love and reflect it in how we live. But rejecting his love creates a spiritual void, a chasm that cannot be filled by anything else. No matter how much someone chases after worldly success, pleasure, or human connection, nothing can replace the transformative power of God's love. Rejecting God's love often manifests in subtle ways. It might look like prioritizing everything else over time with Him, ignoring His word, or resisting His call to repentance. Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God's love is active and sacrificial, proven by the cross. To reject this love is to deny the very act that bridges the gap between us and Him. This rejection isn't always born out of malice. Sometimes it stems from pain, disbelief, or a feeling of unworthiness. People may think, how could God love me after everything I've done? But this is where His love shines brightest. It is unconditional. John 3.16 declares, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. His love is available to everyone, no matter their past, but it must be accepted to transform a life. Rejecting God's love also hardens the heart. Hebrews 3.15 warns, Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts. Each time someone resists His love, they drift further from Him, making it harder to hear His voice and respond. This resistance doesn't just affect one's relationship with God, it affects how they love others. Without God's love as the foundation, relationships often become conditional and self-serving, lacking the depth and grace that only He provides. Have you allowed yourself to receive God's love fully, or have you let doubt, fear, or pride keep you from accepting it? This isn't about looking back with regret, but looking forward with hope. God's arms are always open, ready to embrace anyone who turns to Him. When this love is rejected, it leads to unrepentant sin, a life where the heart remains closed and sin becomes the master. What are the consequences of such a life? When sin is allowed to take root in a person's life without repentance, it grows like a weed, choking out spiritual vitality and drawing the heart further from God. Persisting in unrepentant sin isn't just a sign of rebellion, it's a dangerous indicator of a life walking toward destruction. Sin separates us from God, and refusing to turn away from it leaves the soul vulnerable to eternal consequences. The Bible is clear about the wages of sin. Romans 6.23 states, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This isn't simply physical death, it's spiritual death, the kind of separation from God that hell represents. Sin may seem small or manageable at first, but left unchecked, it hardens the heart and blinds the soul to the need for God's mercy. Unrepentant sin can take many forms. It might be pride, lust, greed, or even something seemingly harmless like gossip. The issue isn't just the sin itself. It's the refusal to bring it before God and ask for forgiveness. 1 John 1.9 offers a beautiful promise. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God's grace is abundant, but it requires us to humble ourselves and turn away from wrongdoing. One of the greatest deceptions is the belief that habitual sin doesn't matter if we're otherwise good people. But Galatians 5, 19, 21 warns us about the works of the flesh, listing behaviors such as sexual immorality, idolatry, jealousy, and drunkenness. It concludes with a sobering statement, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Sin left unaddressed leads to spiritual decay, no matter how justified or hidden it may seem. 
The danger of unrepentant sin is that it makes the heart calloused to conviction. Each time someone ignores the voice of the Holy Spirit, it becomes easier to continue in sin without remorse. Ephesians 4.18 describes this condition. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Over time, this spiritual numbness can make repentance feel impossible. But no matter how far someone has strayed, God's mercy is always available. The story of the prodigal son in Luke 15, 11, 32 illustrates this beautifully. Even after squandering everything, the son returned to his father, who welcomed him with open arms. This is how God responds to repentance, with love, forgiveness, and restoration. However, the choice to return must be made before it's too late. Have you been holding on to sin, convincing yourself it's not that serious? Or have you been waiting for the right time to turn back to God? Now is the moment to respond to His grace. Don't let sin keep you on the path of destruction. What happens when someone not only clings to sin, but also refuses to hear God's voice altogether? Throughout history, God has reached out to humanity with warnings. Messages meant not to instill fear, but to draw people back to Him. Yet many choose to ignore these warnings, turning a deaf ear to the voice of God. This is one of the clearest signs of spiritual danger. Ignoring God's warnings isn't just about neglect. It's about resisting the very love and guidance that can save a soul from destruction. Hebrews 3.15 makes this plea. Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Hardening the heart is a gradual process. It begins with small acts of defiance, justifying sin, dismissing conviction, or rationalizing choices that pull one further from God. Over time, this resistance builds, making it increasingly difficult to hear His voice or respond to His call. God's warnings come in many forms. They might appear through scripture, a sermon, a godly friend's advice, or even an internal sense of conviction from the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 1, 24 to 26 describes the tragic outcome of ignoring such warnings. But since you refuse to listen when I call and no one pays attention when I stretch out my hand, I in turn will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. This imagery is not about a lack of compassion from God, but a stark reminder of the consequences of rejecting His grace. Ignoring God's voice doesn't just impact the present, it has eternal implications. Each time a warning is dismissed, the heart grows colder and more distant. Romans 2.5 warns, But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when His righteous judgment will be revealed. This isn't a warning to inspire hopelessness, but one to awaken us to the urgency of repentance. Even in the face of resistance, God's patience is remarkable. 2 Peter 3.9 reminds us, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God's warnings are always paired with His mercy. They are invitations to step off the path of destruction and walk toward life. Consider your own life. Have you felt moments of conviction, times when you sensed God calling you to change, repent or return to Him. Ignoring those moments doesn't make them disappear. It only makes responding harder in the future. His voice is still calling. But will you listen? When warnings are consistently ignored, the heart eventually becomes indifferent to them, leading to one final dangerous step, delaying the decision to follow Christ. They think, I'll take my faith seriously when I'm older, or I'll focus on God once life slows down. But this delay is one of the clearest signs that someone is walking dangerously close to eternal separation from God. The Bible warns against this mindset. James 4.14 says, Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Life is fleeting, and none of us are promised another day. Delaying the decision to follow Christ is not a neutral choice. It's a rejection of his invitation in the present moment. Procrastination in spiritual matters reveals a misunderstanding of God's patience. While 2 Peter 3.9 reminds us that 
The Lord is patient, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. This patience is not an open-ended guarantee. Each day we delay responding to God's call is a day we risk hardening our hearts further, making it more difficult to turn back to Him. Jesus illustrated this urgency in the parable of the ten virgins, Matthew 25, 1, 2, and 13. Five of the virgins were prepared with enough oil for their lamps, while the other five delayed and were caught unprepared when the bridegroom arrived. The door was shut and they were left outside. This sobering parable reminds us that the opportunity to respond to God is not limitless. When the moment comes, it will be too late to decide. Delaying your decision for Christ also diminishes the life God intends for you now. John 10.10 10 reveals Jesus' purpose. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Following Jesus isn't just about avoiding hell. It's about living a life transformed by His grace, filled with peace, purpose, and joy. Each day spent apart from Him is a day lived outside of His abundant blessings. If you feel God stirring your heart, don't wait. Today is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6.2 declares, I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. There is no better moment than now to turn to Him, to surrender your life, and to accept the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, acknowledging our need for your grace and mercy. We thank you for the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ and for the warnings that guide us back to you. Lord, forgive us for the times we've strayed, ignored your voice, or delayed turning to you. Fill us with the Holy Spirit right now. Let your presence surround us, breaking every chain of sin and doubt. Strengthen our faith, align our hearts with eternity, and lead us on the narrow path that leads to life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, amen. If this message has touched your heart, take a step of faith today. Leave a comment below with the phrase, I choose Jesus, as a declaration of your decision to follow him. And don't stop there. Subscribe to this channel to strengthen your shield of God against the forces of temptation. Together, we can grow in faith, share his truth, and walk confidently on the path that leads to eternal life.